How big is the influence of Paris on world football? Well, how's this for you? 30 players on nine teams at the 2022 World Cup were from Paris or its suburbs, Les Banlieues, with 11 on the France squad. Uh, also newly crowned AFCON champions, Ivory Coast. They featured several as well, uh, including Dortmund's Sebastian Aller, who scored the winning goal, remember, in the final against Nigeria. Uh, Terry, there has to be a, a reason for this, doesn't it? Um, well, how, how does Paris and, and the surrounding areas, how does it do that, kind of produce that level of footballing talent repeatedly? Diversity is pretty mixed. Um, street football, we, 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 we when I say we, because I'm from obviously the suburb of Paris, we still play hard, the will, the desire. Uh, it's all about football, really. Uh, you know, you have a couple of sports that will at times challenge football, but Football, it's a, it's a state of mind in a suburb of Paris. And so, uh, as you can see, I mean, the, the numbers don't, don't lie. It's, it's, it's crazy uh, when you think about it. And we had some, I say we, because I obviously played in the Premier League. We had some great players that played um, in the Premier League and, and managed to win Players Player of the Year. Uh, Angulo Conte, Riyad Mahrez, I won it twice, so that makes it four uh, for us. I mean, it's. It's kind of weird, apart from the obvious that I just stated. You know, we can go back to a lot of, you know, or think, sorry, about a lot of towns in the world with suburbs. It's not only Paris that have suburbs, but for some reason, there's something special in the area. Did you, where you were growing up, did you see others go before you and kind yeah. of use football as the way to elevate and, and kind of make it out of those situations? Yeah, I mean, it's an obvious one. It's all you, you, you go. The wrong, in the wrong direction, which I won't go into details with, with that one. That, that, that's the story of, a, of every bad neighborhood, shall I say. You go into music or it's sport. And the number one sport is football. Uh, so you, you, you can understand why you have a lot of uh, guys from the south of Paris going in that, in, that, in that direction. But it's just, you know, it's, it's just something that we're proud of in, uh, in, the, south, in, the, in the suburb of Paris. Sorry, we, you know, I, I grew up looking at Makilele. Um, Lidon Turam, uh, I played with William Gallas. Uh, we all know that William Gallas could play across the back four, and people uh, often forget that, how successful he was with, uh, with, uh, with Chelsea. But yeah, you know, it, it, it's a tough one to go into details exactly about what I, men what I mentioned, what, why it, it is like that. But yeah, if you take my time for it, I know you want to, yeah. You know, I just want to ask you though, but I mean, every country or mm. maybe an area will have a, a cycle of, you know, that generation. You think of sort of Spain, mm. you know, the, the Spanish team. But this with France now has been going on a very long time, and namely Paris, almost going back sort of 20 years. You wow. think you win the World Cup in 98. Do you see this stopping? I, I, I don't. I don't, and this is why when I was working in France on TV, I called it on air. I do not, and I didn't understand why Paris Saint-Germain is not taking advantage of that. And they had so many players, by the way, in their academy, they left, and we also Kinsley Coman scoring against them, not celebrating a lot of them when they score against Paris Saint-Germain, they don't celebrate. They want to play for Paris Saint-Germain. Everybody in the suburb wants to play for Paris Saint-Germain. But at one point, it wasn't the aim of the club. Now it is. From, from what I can see, where the club is going and, and, and what the Qataris are doing, they do want those players to play for Paris Saint-Germain. They want to educate them, educate the family with dodgy agents. It's not easy sometimes when you come from some neighborhoods, some, come, some guys come into you and try to force you to do certain stuff. They try to educate them and make sure that they can have that luxury of having those players from the suburb of Paris instead of going to spend money to buy, to buy players. Is the biggest example of Mbappe. He's from yeah. the suburbs of Paris. Yeah. He ends up going to Monaco and he ends up yeah. having to spend, what, 200 million or 180 it, million, was it, to buy him back? Well, exactly, that's the best example, because he, he, came, he came to play for Paris Saint-Germain. Like, I, I almost have the same story as him, because I, I, I was in the suburb of Paris, I went to Monaco, next move was, was Juve. Obviously, Paris at the time didn't have, didn't have the resources that they had. I'm not saying I would have gone there, I'm just saying that they didn't have the resources to bring people back. Um, but yeah, uh, Kylian Saliba is from the same time town as, uh, as uh, Kylian Mbappe. And I was mentioning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flex a bit because I'm going to be biased with, no, seriously, I'm going to be in my town where I'm from, where I was born, you know, maybe 20, 25,000 people living in the town. Patrice Sevra is from that town. Uh, born in uh, Dakar, I think Patrice was, but he, he arrived at three, four years old in Les Ulysses. Anthony Martial also is from that town. So we managed 
to win every single trophies. With Evra, me, and Martial. Even Yaya Sano go won the under-20 World Cup. What did Martial win? The Europa League, that's the only thing we're missing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, no? <laughs>